Welcome to the Church of Anonymous Green Bible Institute Spirit Family Forum. I do trust you've had a wonderful day. Again, this is a time where we will share on the topic relevant to you relating to family. Again, we, as we said to be, before, that we have been motivated to address some issues relating to family because we believe that some of the upsurge in violence in the society today, that the, the, the genesis of some of the issues are kind of buried in a family, so to speak. If we can address some of these issues, we believe that we can build a better Barbados. And that is our motivation. And today with me again, I have my co-host, Reverend Anderson Kelman. Well, that, that's a good even to you. All right. And uh, we are happy to be graced with the presence of Daniel Miller. <laughs> Daniel, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Of course, you'll hear from her later. Daniel is a youth leader. Presently, she is the vice president of our district. And uh, she's also a secondary school teacher. And uh, our theme today, we are focusing on bridging the generational gap. If there's one, we discuss that. <laughs> How can we bridge that gap to enrich family life? And um, well, after Reverend Kelman prays, we'll be back with you. Shall we pray? Father, we give you thanks today for your goodness, for your love, and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of family, that institution of, of nurturance, uh, that institution, Father, where we learn and where we're able to be socialized. Pray, God, even now that as you would address this very important topic, you grant us wisdom and direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Welcome back to you, viewers. We are really delighted to be sharing this very important topic this evening that on the one of a generational gap. And we know that this has implications at so many levels, of course, in the family, in terms of uh, the transfer of knowledge and information and practices, uh, the church as well, of course. Uh, but we also know it has implications uh, for the wider society business as well, in terms of uh, succession planning. So I'm looking forward to. Uh, a wonderful discussion with Danielle this evening, mm -hmm. you know, as we look at this very important topic. Now, I want to just share a quick quote before she takes over by June Masters Bakker. And what she says is that a father must lead his children, but first must learn to follow. He must laugh with them, remember the ache of childhood tears, he must hold the past with one hand and reach the future with the other. So there can be no generational gap in family love. Over to you, Daniel. All right, well, thank you so much for having me, um, Reverend Farley and Reverend Kelman. Okay. Um, this really is bridging the gap here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, when we speak of bridging the gap, um, we can see clearly that there is a divide somewhere mm -hmm. and there is a need of someone or something um, to bring it all together. And in most cultures and societies, these gaps seem to be generational. You know, you have the older ones who've gone on and they have these young ones coming up. Something is missing. There was a link that was there that seemingly is broken. And so now we're trying to find a way, how can we fix this? Right? And the same thing is happening in our context and there, there's no difference. We have to make bridges in the way that we raise families. Now, I come from a home where 
my my extended family they raised me and i usually affectionately call them my old people they mm. raised me <laughs> and because of of their upbringing there would be ways that i would see the world and society different because i had that older generation who was there to hold my hand and help me through some of life's challenges and i dare say that we have a society where that is failing we have younger parents now we have younger grandparents and they don't and these younger children that are coming out especially when we see them in schools they things that we talk about they have no recollection of what we are talking about or discussing because they did not have that background mm -hmm. and so I believe honestly that we as a church should be the great example of how to help build or to merge these, these gaps that we seemingly have in society. So I was looking at Acts and Acts chapter 2 says, God says, in the last days I will pour my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. And from this verse I can see that the rules in the body of Christ are not only for older ones, but they are for the younger ones as well. But the rules do not exist in and of themselves, they are all working together and this suggests to me that that God wants all of us to work together to be able to edify the body and to carry out the great commission that he has commanded us to do um, a couple years ago um, at our local assembly the late senior friendship president sister Williams she had the theme bridging the gap and she brought this brought us the youth on board and uh, during that year the senior friendship whenever they had their senior service they would invite the youth and we had the opportunity to lead worship with them. Now that is interesting. Now for me, I am accustomed to the hymns, obviously from being in a home with the older generation, but for those young people who had the opportunity now to serve on that worship team that morning, they would have learned some hymns, they would have learned some songs, they would have learned how the older ladies and men would have done it back in the day, and they got the experience to enjoy that. And then they also brought their sounds, so the contemporary sounds, they were able to teach the older ones. And I thought that that service was really well done because you got to see the meshing of the two. And, and both generations were able to see, is that we're not taken away from each other. We are merging and helping each other because I strongly believe in the hymns. You know, they, they have some sound doctrine and theology in there that sometimes when you sit down and unpack a hymn, you're like, Mm. Okay, this, this, this is deep here. We have some, uh, some levels there to unpack. And so they were able to join. And, and then they had that experience where they no longer say, well, these are just old people. No, they also have a story to tell. And we can join in on that story. Additionally, they had the opportunity to, to sit with them in a social gathering. So it went from church to social where they sat with them and talked with them during Christmas time. And I found that the fellowship was rich because the older people then as well, they had the opportunity to do some line dancing and, and stuff like that. And so the young people enjoyed themselves. They laughed and, and there, was, there was a sense of camaraderie that we, we need to see happening more often. Because if we recognize that each group has something to offer, we would not disregard each other, but we would work together to make sure that this gap that is seemingly there can now be closed and we can all work together. Yes. Yeah. The word also states that we are a body, though having individual parts, clearly showing that we are separate and physical, we should be one in mind and in spirit. So then how, how do we do this? And why does it seem that our gap is widening and not being fixed? If we look back in Titus chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 8, it strongly admonishes us as younger people to be under mentorship. 
to be under persons. The older women are supposed to teach the younger women and the older men also teach the, the younger men. And I think that that's one thing that is lacking today in society because we need to learn how to fix it. But no one seems to want to be under mentorship. Mm -hmm. Or there are some people who don't even want to offer the mentorship. It seems like I've made it and so I'm going ahead. They're not looking back to see who they can bring up. And I think that's something that's big, that's missing in our society, that many people are not mentoring others. And they believe that mentorship is key to bridging the gap. How, how good would it be, uh, Reverend Kelman, Reverend Farley, to have a, a young protege come up unto you and then you're able to teach them. This is how it was for me when I was young in ministry. These are some of the pitfalls. These are things that you can avoid. Um, know that if anything happens, I am here. You know, a lot of young people are looking for persons to be there with them. Um, as an educator, you get to journey through life with so many young people from so many backgrounds. And you notice that the one thing that they always want is someone to love and care for them. Sometimes you look at their households and the households are faltering. They have so many different issues, but once they find that one person that they can confide in, that one person that they can share with, that does tremendous things in their lives. If we look at the block culture, we know that they have each other's back. That's one reason that these young men may gravitate to the block Sorry. because the young men there on the block are going to take them in. They're going to teach them whatever ropes they need to teach them and they're going to be there with them, supporting them. So in the same way in the church, we also have to make sure that mentorship is taking place. Now, understanding one's role in the grand scheme of things, it takes humility, however, on both parts to see that those things may change. So it may not be the same way in 1956 as it is in 2020. Things may change, but the message, the morals, the values, they, however, they remain the same. And we must work together to achieve the goals. Another thing that I, I believe is key is intentionality. You have to be intentional about the well-being of the persons that you may want to mentor or the persons that you come into contact with that you want to help change their lives because we have to see it as just as bigger than us. Once you have a relationship with this person or this, this young person you're bringing or this mentee, you have to know that you are going to make a positive um, effect or impact in their life and that can change mm -hmm. the course for so many things. You, we don't ever know the ripple effect mm -hmm. that can take place when we intentionally go into the life of another. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you have to be intentional about meeting these young people, be intentional about seeing change coming about in their lives and understanding that your mentorship is key. Mm -hmm. And being a positive mentor, mm -hmm. that's important, mm -hmm. um, is essential in, in, the, in the youth's life. And I, I dare say older people's lives because there are some older people that need mentorship as well. Let's say those mid-rangers as well. Some people might be going through a lot of crisis in their life and they need somebody to come in. So from baby boomers to millennials, we have to have some type of mentorship in order to bridge these gaps. Yeah. Well, I think you've said quite a bit. <laughs> there's, there's, there's phenomenal food for thought in what Daniel has, has said so far, and I'm sure it's going to spark uh, much discussion, you know, both in terms of with us here and you, the viewers at home as well. I see we'll take a break and we'll come back shortly to continue this important discourse. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. As, as Daniel was, was sharing, I was wondering uh, what she might think to be some of the challenges that create friction between the 
the older and, and, and the younger. And I, I like what she said, though, that, that both groups need one another, yeah. right? I think that, that's fundamental, yeah? yeah? yeah. Um, but what, what, are some of the, what are some of the issues that you think may cause that level of, of you know, of resistance? Mm. Yeah. I think I just the dynamic of the, the age difference, I think, because obviously these younger people are coming out in an age where everything is fast. They want it now. It's everything it. happens. It's instant life. Mm -hmm. um, and before, everything took time. People took time to do this. They took time to do that. And uh, that dynamic alone is, is, is interesting because obviously if you want something now, you can't. You, you don't have it time to wait on it you you want it now and these other people why are you rushing there's no need to rush there we have time to get things sorted and so that may cause some sort of conflict and also we're in a technological age everything is so as we are saying for instant mm -hmm. you can just pop up something and you get it even researching mm -hmm. um I remember researching with encyclopedias and going to the library and right. getting things done. Everything now is on Google. Google says it, it is gold. Mm -hmm. And there's no veering from that. But obviously, before, you would have had time to, to really dig in to see where this information was coming from. Some of us run with information and it's false. And then yeah. once we have our minds made up about something, there's no turning. And there we go, conflict again. But you know, the, the, the mother might be saying, but I told told you not to do this or I told you not to do that but the young person already had their mind made up that that's what they were going to do so challenges and opinions and challenges with the very outset of how this current life is is situated or made up is a clear yes. um, conflict yeah I know what you're saying there and and I'm thinking as well as you share uh, it seems to be an element of of fear mm. you know um, across the generations and a level of, of misunderstanding as well, too, with regards to uh, motivation and with regards to uh, what persons want. And, and maybe, maybe that's a part of our, our own journey, you know, understanding that, that we are different, we see things differently, and it's not necessarily in every case a right or wrong issue, mm -hmm. uh, but more issue of perspective, and therefore engagement becomes, becomes a, critical, a critical component. And... I want to go one step further and let Arabo Farley um, come in here. I'm going to go one, one step further by saying, though, that we have to be, to be clear in our mind that it is necessary. I mean, it's a, it's a biblical, it's a social imperative um, for us to be able to transmit and transfer uh, information across the areas if we, if we fail to do that. And I, I also want to say as well that those of us who are older, it is incumbent on us um, to ensure that it occurs, because if, if we don't, then we have failed in our own responsibility um, to our younger, our younger folk. Remember, Farley? Yeah, maybe perhaps you're saying then that we, as older, older parties, um, that, that's in terms of the home, so the grandparents, um, because we do have um, some families where the grandparents become part of that household. Right. Um, rather, in the case where the nuclear family um, would have perhaps lived away before, but now perhaps for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, sometimes even divorce, they come back home with, the, with, the, with their parents. Or in some cases, like, like now the pandemic, some people lose their, lose their jobs. Their houses. Yeah, in homes. They have, to, they have to come back home to live with the grandparents. Mm -hmm. Um, so whatever, whatever the scenario, um, grandparents are critical. Yeah. And I think perhaps that's some, as, as was mentioned before, understanding that we need each other mm -hmm. uh, is critical. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I came across an article that talks about different types of grandparents. <laughs> Interesting enough, I want to share with you um, from the book Bowser and Bowser. And they zero in on five types of grandparents. The formal grandparent, um, focusing on morals and rules and so on. And then you have the, the fun seekers, fun seekers. Then you have the, what they call the parental surrogate, 
who fill in for um, parents perhaps who really can't for whatever reason. That's right. Maybe work or whatever situation mm -hmm. may be. They will have what they call reservoirs of family wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then the distant figures. Distant is not necessarily always bad because there may be persons who are geographically distant but still very much in, in the lives of the of the of mm -hmm. the children. Mm -hmm. And I think essentially what is being said here, the significance of um, those grandparents mm -hmm. working with the parents. That's right. And guiding. Uh, it, it's critical. Yeah, yeah. It's critical because sometimes it, it can be fearful too because what has happened is since we moved away from the extended family, mm -hmm. we don't have that kind of meshing mm -hmm. um, from early where those grandparents help cradle those children. We move uh, maybe to the villages and the terraces and so on, nothing wrong with that. But we need to come back and bring, bring the children back to families of origin that the, the grandchildren can get to see the grandparents, they can play with them, they can share stories, you know? Maybe it's not intentional that we don't do it, mm -hmm. but that's why you're so busy. Like I think the point you made just now, but it being intentional. Mm -hmm. But these are critical because what will happen is as the children grow up, they can be so distant from their from the grandparents. And in a sense, in terms of the stories, the tradition, the wisdom. Wisdom yeah. is yes. not there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and I, I think though that, that you're making, you know, um, an important point. But I, I like what you said though, in terms of grandparents working with parents. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I think that, that that's that's the Philip. That's the, that's the key, because sometimes it can go the other way as well. That is right. right? Grandparents can work against parents. So they say that you know, parents yeah, I mean, I we know that sometimes, you know, as as persons um, age, mm -hmm. um, they can become um, a lot gentler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you hear you hear things like, you know, what you gave with now mm -hmm. from, from, from your mother. Yeah. I can never get what you with. You know. Exactly. You know. Um, yeah. and, and sometimes you want to make sure that the balance is there. Right. That there's the gifts, yes, the love, yes, yeah. uh, but also the firmness when, yeah. that, when, that, when that time comes as when it well, comes too. To yeah. Punishment, and yes. perhaps. Yes. And guidance and, and supportive parents as Support, well, too. Yes. You know, what the parents, of course, are not over yes. the top. Yeah. You know, supportive yes. parents as well, That's in terms so of. Yes. Yeah, that, because, because it can create a conflict. Oh, you know, and, yes. and children and ch ch children will, will find the path of this resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, as if Granny is someone who, who conspires. <laughs> You know, then daddy, you know what I'm Right, yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. So, wait until the money or daddy is out, <laughs> and the children use what they consider right, yeah. to be their tricks. Mm -hmm. Great. Daniel, any mm -hmm. comment? Oh, yes, I, I totally agree with you guys. The, the marriage um, between the grandparents and, and parents is very, very important. And as you were saying, there are times when these children know if they can use that, their grandparent mm -hmm. against the parent or not. Mm -hmm. And that can cause further conflict and a further divide in the generation yes. yeah because obviously no you know i don't want my child to go around That's this right. body or that body because mm -hmm. they will turn against me mm -hmm. and it causes more uh, more conflict in the family and we're trying to avoid that at all levels so once mm -hmm. there's clear communication yeah. both parties can work together to mm -hmm. ensure that the child in question or the children are well taken care of yeah i think i think that made a point that i wanted to kind of um, speak to, and that had to do with the issue of reverse mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We often we, think about mentoring in terms of from the older to the younger, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that typically is what occurs. Yeah. But there's also the, the element of the younger to the older as well. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think, again, uh, she gave an excellent illustration with reference to her own church yeah. and, and how they did it. Yeah, um, but, but I think, though, that that has to be also um, a part of our frame, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in terms of being able to to help our our, our older folk to understand the needs, wishes, and desires of the, of the older uh, of the younger folk mm -hmm. by having them in the in the in their space and 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 I like the word that she used, intentional, having them in in their space mm -hmm. in a way that allows them to learn uh, from these younger folk because they bring a lot of 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 energy, mm -hmm. they bring their own. Uh, levels of experience to bear as well, mm -hmm. you know, it may be this different from yeah. the older folk, but it is their, it is their truth, their reality, mm -hmm. um, and being able to 
to synthesize, yeah. you know, what they're bringing and what, what you know to be, mm -hmm. I think is a critical element in terms of being able to get the best um, in that, in that situation, yes. And the point is well taken yes. because I, I recall, even in my own context, I thought that I was um, a parent that can do macaroni pie well, right? So, but when my daughter comes from school now and she wants to do macaroni pie differently, you know, I, I think the whole area of humility, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm an expert, <laughs> but here is it, well, daddy, let me try this method. And you know, you know the way it's all. It's all, it's all, it's all, yeah. Before we just yeah. toss the cheese in the yeah, 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 pot yeah, and stir. Yeah, yeah. But then the white sauce, I, I, in fact, my daughter ain't just into that. Yes. I know that's not what we, up yesterday, did they? I, that's what we do. Yes. <laughs> so that, that, I, I, that, I that's, that's a new standard now. <laughs> that's, that's a new norm. <laughs> I, I was not aware of the white sauce method. <laughs> you grate the cheese and you put it in the macro and you stir and, and, stir, yeah. and you put it in the oven. But I think the white sauce thing, the distribution and so on. So I mean, here, here's it. That and then I, I, I suppose she was gone to her classes at um, school and so on and learned something. Mm -hmm. And I, I could have said, no, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I mean, you have to be open yeah. and teachable. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of reverse mentorship is critical. Mm -hmm. and, re and releasing some reins of control because mm -hmm. I find sometimes that that can also be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, I've been here, I know, therefore, this is how we're going to do it. Full stop. Yeah. And, and we have to get to the place where mm -hmm. we start to release some of these reins of control and say, okay, you try this. Yes, right. Yeah, yes. you try it. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. You could either sink or you fall. Yeah, yeah. And it happens. Yes, but isn't that that whole life goes? I mean, yeah. I mean that, that whole... New ways of doing uh, things. Uh, yeah. the, the whole, the whole what, what it's called, the, the Hegelian dialectic, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you have, you know, a thesis. That's what you know to be to be correct. The other one brings a, a an antithesis. Right. You know, a different way of, of seeing it. Yeah. And together you create a synthesis, yeah. which, which is the best of both worlds. You know, yeah. and, and you're richer. Both worlds are richer for it. So, so I, I think to, to even to even I mean I mean this is what generation gap is. I mean to to not deal with it though is to is to you know impoverish our own selves yeah. with yeah. reference to to a body of, of knowledge and information that can make all of our lives a whole lot, a lot richer. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think the whole idea of each person taking standing their ground, yeah. Yeah. but both end up destroying the relationship, yeah. impoverishing the relationship for both. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think what Daniel said though, um, is the ability for us to listen to each other. I think that that's, that's really, yeah. you know, the overarching principle. You have to listen um, listen without judgment, listen, mm -hmm. Um, give person a chance to express um, their thoughts, you know, uh, be open enough um, that if change is necessary on both sides, mm -hmm. that, that it can occur. I know change is always difficult, mm -hmm. um, but be open enough to be able um, to, you know, to allow change to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to end this comment um, from Balzi and Balzi again. An intimate, meaningful relationship between grandparents and teenage children can be mutually beneficial contributing to the grandparents' mental health and the grandchildren's efforts to resolve identity issues. Critical. They Critical. need each other. Critical. Yeah, John Evans. Closing prayer. Thank you very much, Shabu. Thank you very much, Daniel, for your, for your wisdom. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. We, we enjoyed this session. We were blessed. Yes. Father, we give you thanks today for this discussion. And we pray for its impact on those who will have been viewing this program. And Lord, we have reaffirmed and asserted the immense value of uh, generations coming together. And may this program be a conduit that leads in that direction. Lord, we give you thanks. Bless Daniel and her endeavors as an educator. Uh, bless her, but Farley. Bless, Lord, this entire program as we continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.